Ever since the dynastic extinction 15 million years ago that saw the dramatic change in the context of Chimere and a spike in portal activity, the oceans around the known world have been a volatile place. The marine reptiles that for millions of years have enjoyed unchallenged supremacy suddenly shared the oceans with an influx of mammals through the portal. Most successful of these marine mammals were the cetaceans. Shortly after their arrival, the macroraptorial sperm whales established themselves as contenders for apex marine predators. They drove many of the large mosasaurs and elasmosaurs to extinction. For millions of years, the grandfather whale Libyatan ruled the temperate and cold oceans of Chimere. The grandmother shark, which came to Chimere in the same harvest, overtook the warm water top predator niche. In general, the waters near the equator were too warm for most cetaceans to cross, but in the southern hemisphere, they quickly rose to dominance. This reign of the raptorial sperm whales was not to last. From north of the equator came the Motomazor, a social, intelligent, venomous, and cooperative mosasaur that reclaimed the top predator niche from the mammalian usurpers. Livyatan was quickly driven to extinction in the temperate waters. Now the great-grandfather whale is relegated to a small population in the southern oceans, far beyond the known world. Two macroraptorial sperm whales are still found in the known world, the Sohiajun and the Valuk. Neither is common, but they are impressionable hunters of marine mammals, mostly smaller cetaceans. The derp is a small squid specialist related to the dwarf and pygmy sperm whales. By far the most common sperm whale is the cachalot, a species in the same genus as sperm whales of Earth. These animals are distinguished by a more robust jaw with fewer teeth, distinct countershading, and a tall dorsal fin. Their jaws are an adaptation for hunting on average larger squid and krakens. The coloration and dorsal fin are for camouflage and agility, as cows and calves must avoid predation by the motomazor in warmer waters. Bulls of this species are quite aggressive and are known to hunt and kill motomazor likely stemming from memories of these sea monsters in their childhood. They are the most hunted species by Akanuk whalers. For this reason, bulls will also target ships that they encounter in the ocean, making them one of the many reasons that Chimerans rarely venture beyond the inland sea. Older bull cachalot can sometimes reach lengths of 80 to 85 feet in length, and weigh as much as 100 tons in extreme cases, making them among the largest animals of Chimere. Narwhals of Chimere are quite distinct from those on Earth, having shorter and stronger tusks, much larger size overall, and living in larger groups. Their more robust build also calls to mind a beluga. Chimera narwhals of both sexes usually possess a tusk. Although not intended for combat, being mostly used to stir up sediment and disorient small prey, they can be employed in an intimidating phalanx to threaten predators while the more vulnerable members of the pod escape. The oceans of Chimera are more productive than those of Earth, in large part because of the purple algae endemic to the planet. These waters are also a few degrees warmer. This has made for excellent conditions for cephalopods, and squid populations are diverse and quite high. This culminates in a lot of predators specialized in hunting squid. Three species of beaked whales can be found in the ocean surrounding the known world, and many globe-headed dolphins like the pilot whale and Risso's dolphin are common, along with species like the Shingu that are unique to Chimere. Dolphins and porpoises specialized in fish are also quite successful. The most recent wave brought such familiar animals as the common, spinner, and bottlenose dolphins to Chimere in great numbers. Although there are still a few species of small mosasaur, many were driven to scarcity or extinction due to competition with these small yet intelligent cetaceans. Two river dolphin species can be found in the known world. One is quite similar to the river dolphins found today in the rivers of South America and Asia. The other, the Ogul, is a relic urinodelphinid, the first group of dolphins to colonize Chimere. Their saltwater cousins were driven to extinction by modern dolphins, as happened on Earth, but these piscivores have found great success in the estuaries and rivers, using their extended upper jaw to scare prey from the sediment. The crin is a relative of the false killer whale, and like the macroraptorial whales, almost exclusively hunts small dolphins and seals. Most of the orcas of the known world are from the most recent wave and are fish specialists, like the so-called resident orcas of coastlines on Earth. There is also a population that came to Chimera in the late Pliocene. These orcas function much more like the transient Earth orcas, 
being marine mammal hunters, with some anatomical adaptations such as an enlarged melon that enhances their echolocation, and proportionally larger jaws and teeth. These orcas have been responsible for the decline of macroraptorial sperm whales in recent millennia and readily face off against elasmosaur competitors as their intelligence and aggression makes up for smaller size. They are most common in the colder seas, but encountered in the known world as they follow migrating baleen whales to and from calving grounds. The power, cunning, and brutality of these dolphins has been noticed by Chimerans, and a most ferocious cult has arisen among the Tsuhenjin that venerate and honor them. Members of the Blackfish cult tattoo themselves to resemble the orca and emulate their more vicious attributes against their opponents, up to and including cannibalism, as they witness polar orcas hunting dolphins and other whales. They are the most feared warriors among Chimerans, and the hiring of Blackfish mercenaries is a violation of many international treaties. And that's all for this one. Tune in for the next video, which will cover the baleen whales, and how the context of Chimere has had a dramatic influence on one of the most iconic features of these majestic animals. Cheers, folks!